Now, let's look at another example, which is interesting for this discussion. Um, one behavior of mankind that we will never get rid of is its tendency, uh, which varies between individuals, probably because of genetic reasons, which is the use of psychotropic substances. And it ranges from anything, alcohol, nicotine, all the way to, uh, to heroin and derivatives of, of, of cannabis like, uh, like hashis and marijuana. Now, there has been tentatives to, or, 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 or ways to try out to root out this type of behavior. You may think of the, uh, of the prohibition period in the United States at the beginning of the last century, or you may think of the war on drugs uh, that was declared by Nixon in the, in the 60s, 70s, uh, and, and then endorsed uh, more and more internationally. It's a disaster. It's an example of taking care of natural human behavior in a repressive way, where in the end, the bill to be paid by society is, is, is much higher than if you would take care of it, accepting in the margins such type of behavior. There's three, three countries actually right now where interesting ways of dealing with the problem show very much promise. It's, it's, it's Holland, it's Switzerland, it's, uh, it's Portugal lately, Portugal where they have uh, totally legalized or depenalized is, there, is the better expression, the use of any psychotropic drug. And, uh, and have shown that if you then uh, have a system where you accompany people who use those drugs in a proper, proper way, the prevalence actually will drop and crime related to this type of behavior will become less. And uh, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a striking difference with what happens in the United States of America. So you, you could call this a utilitarian approach of a type of human behavior where you accept that society um, lives with some cost to the individual and society in general because of this behavior, but tries to keep the cost as low as possible. Mm -hmm. It's a combination of education, repression, um, uh, therapeutics, and very important, harm minimization. Mm -hmm. It's you do everything you can to allow people to engage in this type of behavior in such a way that the cost to their lives and the lives of people around them is as low as possible. The typical example, of course, is the distribution of clean syringes to people who want to inject drugs. Uh, what happens is that um, these people will not share syringes anymore or less. Therefore, transmission of HIV virus, uh, AIDS, uh, hepatitis uh, C and B, I mean, everything uh, becomes less. And it, and it really has been proven now several times that these types of, 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 um, of policies in the end work out. They, they have a disadvantage. Politically, they're not so easy to sell because they're messy. Mm -hmm. the, the image of the psychotropic drug user sticking a needle in his vein is not nice to look at. And the fact that we today, for example, in Geneva, have a safe injection facility where people come with their own drugs and get clean conditions to inject their drugs is indeed not a nice sight. But if you take then everything into account, including the individual that's injecting himself, it is a situation where again the cost to the individual and society is lower as if you would relegate this into clandestine behavior out in the streets where of course uh, um, when you start sharing syringes, etc., then uh, th there are awful things happening. Mm -hmm. Now, back to doping. Why do I tell all this about psychotropic drug use? Perhaps in doping, we would sh we, we should change our way of looking at it. S sports is um, a special human endeavor that has totally changed over the last hundred years. Something, think about the Olympics, which was considered as a, a pastime and a, a rigorous amateur kind of uh, activity today has been totally become professional with lots of money around and, uh, and and an economic endeavor by itself so it's become a profession and any profession comes with pluses and minuses and risks and regulations etc Cer certain things you can do in a profession and sometimes you can if you're a soldier you may die at war well that's a big risk but that, I mean that's that's the job um, if you're a pilot, uh, a soldier pilot, 
um, you may die while you're in your plane, but you may even be obliged to take amphetamines mm -hmm. if the combat conditions uh, ask for it. I mean, the United States is very clear about it. They, they, they sign consent forms where they say, well, yeah, in certain conditions, I comply to the regulation that I have to take amphetamines because of, uh, well... Um, it, it, it's an example how, how society, depending on what profession we're talking about, can, can totally change the way you, you regulate and you look at things. Back to sports again. Why not allowing the principle of performance enhancement by putting safeguards, by obliging the elite sports athlete to be accompanied by competent medical personnel, have safeguards control for the health status of the athlete, allowing them to exclude from competition for certain for certain reasons and 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 keep a little bit of a gray area like everywhere else in sport because it's interesting the doping rule is about the only rule where we try so hard to really make things black and white anywhere else there is some fuzzy part to rules in sport think about football you're not allowed to touch the ball with your hand are you well, sometimes you can get away with it. It, it depends on how, what happens. And in the end, it's the referee who has the last word, and everybody obeys to what the referee says.